Hello and welcome to the fourth video in this series programming the simple floppy robin with Cocos 2DX for Android. So this video then we finally get around to looking at how we might add a little robin to the game screen. Now the first thing you might think is, well the simplest thing to do is to create a sprite like so, like we've done with the background here, and add it at a certain position, say for now, in the middle of the screen. The thing is with that, that's not actually the best way of doing things, because if we think a little bit into the, the future, we're going to be in a situation where we'll touch the screen. If that touches on our robin, we want our robin to jump up in the air a little bit. And the 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 issue with doing that with the robin is that we need some other we need to have some um, certain properties that maybe the CC sprite doesn't have. So things that come to the top of my mind straight away are things like when you touch the robin, what's the speed it starts jumping up with, and then we'll also need to know, let's say, before the game has started, whether the robin is in a, a state which, where the game is going, so i.e. it falls to the bottom of the screen or not, or just stays put. So we'll need to know some various states for our robin as well. And whenever you're in a situation like this where you need some extra properties on something, then the easiest way of doing this, and I'm sorry if you're very familiar with C++ and I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but the easiest way to do this is to subclass whatever you're using. In this case, we'll be subclassing a CC sprite. And the reason I wanted to take a minute just saying this really obvious thing is when I read online um, questions and problems that people have, people seem to avoid subclassing stuff all the time. Um, and I don't know why, because it, it makes things, I mean, I'm, I'm nowhere near a professional programmer or anything, but it seems to make things so easy to be able to just subclass something and carry on using all of the public methods and things available in that object, whilst then adding your own properties in. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to right click on classes, click new file, and in C and C++, a C++ class, and I'm going to call this C uh, Robin, like so. Uh, make sure that I've ticked the target here and just hit create and that will now create a couple of files for us a crobin.h and a crobin.cpp The first thing I want to do is go to hello world scene.h and I'm just going to copy this include for cocos 2 dh and drop that in underneath the include io stream and in fact I'm going to take out the include io stream because I don't think we really we really need it okay so the way we'll do it then is we'll make our class C Robin and what we want to do is we want to subclass the CC sprite and specifically the public parts of the CC sprite like so. And now we can look at actually building our class and putting it together and I'm slightly perturbed because nothing's gone coloured here as it usually does inside uh, Coco, uh, inside Xcode so I'm wondering if I've made an error, never mind. Okay, so you remember with the sprite creation we used a create statement here to get a point to the sprite and this is probably the only slightly tricky thing um, in subclassing your own sprite in this way is the way to do a similar thing and we'll do this by adding a static function and I actually got this from a book and I can't remember which book it was that I bought but I got this from a book anyway the way of doing it and if I remember it then I'll credit it because um, it's a useful thing to know but basically what we're going to do is we're going to return a pointer to our created robin and we'll call this function uh, create robin with file name like so and then we'll take in a constant car and our file name and have the usual obligatory bad spelling okay and what's going to happen is this function here and I was in Java mode there putting the public this should be like this a static function returning our class type this will then be used for us to create our robin so the usage would be inside our hello world uh, scene file then would be c robin create etc etc and that would return a pointer then to this kind of object or this object so that's one thing we've got there we've got to the the creation and what we're going to do in this video is we're going to add also some variables and things in that we want our robin to have which we won't be using in this video but we will later on so the first one i'm going to add is a constant float and this is going to be the start 
speed in the y direction and it's going to be set to 300 and this is the speed and you'll see how this is used later at which it starts jumping upwards when it's touched the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a state so what state it's in and the last thing we're going to do is have its speed in the y direction so its current speed in the y direction what we're also going to do then is name some functions here one of them is going to be uh, an update function which will be called from the update in the main uh, hello hello world scene or the hello hello world layer sorry and this will take in a delta time um, in fact I'm going to call this update robin so we don't have any confusions with the standard update that's available in the CC sprite and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to create a reset function and these are all being created for later on but we'll do them now because I've got them sort of prepared we'll have the get state so we can get the state of our robin and then we'll have the set state now Kogos 2D does actually provide uh, some shortcut macros for generating getters and setters um, but I still like to do this myself manually anyway and I'll actually have set start speed as well with close this will then reset the robin to its start speed and that's all we need for now so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take these all these functions here then and just now go into the robin.cpp and inside the robin.cpp I'm going to add in a shortcut here to tell us to use the cocos 2d namespace and then start adding some brackets into these functions and we'll fill these functions out probably in a later video not right now so I'll just grab these and just drop all these in like this and of course we need to have our C Robin with a double colon like this the next code is saying alarmingly black and not uh, coloring anything which is always a, a dangerous sign at the moment I'm just going to return zero on the state because we'll add those in later on as some constants and the rest seems okay good so the thing we need to deal with in this video then is the actual creation of our robin so the way we're going to do this is we're going to say uh, c robin and we'll just call it the pointer to our sprite equals and now we can use the um, create that we've had or the initialization with file so we'll say that it equals a new c robin so we've actually got our object which remember is subclass from a cc sprite and now we can say that if this was created and and now what we're going to do is because we've actually created it but now we want to initialize it with a file we can say init with file and we have to give the file name which was robin-hd dot png and I'm actually better off doing that with the file name here which is the whole reason that we've got that inside here so if sprite and sprite init with file file name then we'll do some things inside here which is sprite and something called auto release which is a way that Cocos 2DX framework has tried to be similar to the iPhone framework and controls the memory management of the sprites which is extremely useful and then we return our sprite like so so it could be seen as a little bit complicated the way this works but actually it isn't we're just creating the object inside here if you've already created a sprite but you can then later on initialize using the init with file so you initialize with the file name like so set to auto release and return otherwise there's another macro provided which I won't go into the details in this video by the framework where we can safely delete what we've created here because something's gone wrong in here and then we can return null like so so if things have gone wrong that's what's going to happen so I'm just going to click build now and see how many errors I've made because I've been typing far too long and the build has failed because I've got the static here and I shouldn't have so I'll just try building again and the build has failed again because I need a semicolon sorry about this just again 
and the build seems to have succeeded good so where are we where are we where are we a robin here and it still hasn't colored everything in okay so we've created we've subclassed our robin uh, subclassing sprite and what that means is subclassing cc sprite is we've got everything that um, cc sprite uses but we've also got these added functions and variables which we'll be using later so all i want to do now is actually put a robin on the screen to check everything's working so we're going to hello world scene.cpp and at the top now i'm just going to say include and see robin.h and save and now inside the initialization here before the this dot set uh, set touch enabled, so I'm going to create a robin, and in fact, let me think about this. I'm going to make actually a robin a private um, property or private variable inside the class because we'll be needing to access it later. So let's actually um, declare up here our class C robin like so and we'll have our c robin and our pointer to our robin like so good that's a bit better and then what we can do is is we can take this robin inside hello world down here and now we can say c robin and create robin with file name and here we'll put the correct file name which was robin dash hd.png and now we've done that we just set the position and add it in exactly the same way that we did the background sprite and I know that you'll have seen that I've used the z-index background we're going to call this z-index robin now which will change shortly inside constants but the positioning remains exactly the same and remember to add the robin not the background sprite again otherwise you'll get a crash so I'm just going to copy uh, just going to constant sorry and copy this line here make a new constant change this name to Robin change this to a 1 which means in fact I'll change it to a 10 which means it's going to go in front of the background I always like to do it in 10s usually so I can fit things in between later on if necessary back into hello world scene and just build and everything should build and now let's run the program and see if we finally get our Robin on the screen. And for some reason we have a delay. Ah, good, there it is. Okay, so it's appeared, and now you can see that, I don't know if you can see the log or not, but the log underneath detects our touches, but we've now got our little Robin appeared in the middle of the screen. And the next steps, of course, now are to make it jump up and down when we when we touch it. Okay then, so that's it for this video. Hope it's made some sense. We're making quite quick progress and see you in the next one.